Okay, good afternoon. I'll just get myself comfy and then uh, I'll start chatting to you. Um, my gorgeous, amazing husband Nick has just taken Bella for a walk while it's dry. Um, we've just pulled up on a site, um, Riverside, um, just uh, this side of Plymouth. Um, we wanted to finish off the Cornwall um, border go right down the bottom to Tor Point and then head back up towards Bude, um, Bodmin, Bude and do the bit that we didn't see um, originally. But then due to this happening, <laughs> um, we're about to take a detour. So yeah, I just wanted to pop on and um, do my video um, while, whilst Nick's out. Um, I may get a little bit upset because I've had a rough couple of days um mainly because of this you know i'm a very independent kind of girl i like to think i am and uh more than that very active um oh and just excuse the way i look because obviously not had a shower for a couple of days <laughs> um but we've pulled upon this site and um i've got a disabled shower to go into um an easy accessible shower um in a, in a little while um yeah so um i'm just going to rewind and go back a little bit because a couple of people have said you need to be careful walking around polpero and Lou, and i thought i was careful <laughs> um yeah you know we're very adventurous we've done you'll see on our um motome adventures that we've literally walked here there and everywhere i've got this fitbit on and we've done minimum of twenty thousand steps a day if we've not reached twenty that ten thousand we've not been happy so averaging out twenty two twenty five thousand steps um because my background um is a fitness instructor i've taught all my life um i've just turned 49 and i've been teaching since i was 18 so um i'm i'm like to think I'm active um so the walks we've done has been brilliant however um if I just rewind a little bit um six years ago I got cervical cancer um yeah I am doing this video a little bit about me this time and my journey my life journey um because I feel the need to do that now um yeah got diagnosed with cervical cancer not long after I'd met Nick um and um yeah I, I do like talking about my my past um because it helps to get things off, off your chest doesn't it and more to the point it helps other people um so yeah diagnosed with cervical cancer i was teaching 27 classes a week um fitness classes from pilates to aqua to uh, circuit training the lot um lost a lot of weight um because i'd met nick uh, i wanted to look really good for him he's my toy boy by the way um and um yeah just um went doctors actually to see if i was too old to have another child um which he said no you know you'll have to um have more checks though that's fine this so i was 42 ish i think something like that not very good at maths <laughs> um i'm 49 now by the way so met and i've had cervical cancer six years ago so yeah seven eight years ago um when i met nick and um anyway ended up going for um uh to the gynecology clinic which i thought was going to be a routine smear test because i wasn't due till de december but i actually went to the doctors in may um april may time and um yeah went there um, nick said do you want me to come with you i said no it'll literally be a routine smear test and uh went there and she said right if if i see anything untoward then we'll do a biopsy so i'm sat there with my legs up um a biopsy <laughs> um um yeah i put two and two together and thought that's something to do with cancer and anyway um Lo and behold, she stopped what she was doing and she pulled the screen round and said, yeah, it looks like it's it was literally black. 
um looks like this could be cancerous um so we'll do a biopsy now and then then it was just the waiting game which was just horrid um so yeah i just wanted to say about that because it leads me to say about i've had trouble after trouble since having cervical cancer um i now have um peripheral neuropathy in my legs um which was due to this was before covid so it was about probably 18 months in i've got this really itchy sensation in the bottom of my feet like i really wanted to scratch the bone um and then it started to be like pins and needles and it went up my leg um and then since that um can't feel anything in my feet um yet yeah, still continue to de teach aerobics and you know lead a normal life but up here every day i had this sensation of my feet are like this um and numbness um like we'd walk along i put a new pair of flip-flops on for example and nick could say you know you're bleeding um and then look down and yeah it's sore well i'm sure you've seen my picture of my walking boots at the beginning of our journey um had a big massive blister on my little toe um, you can rewind and look at the pictures on that um yeah that didn't hurt me at all um because i can't feel my feet anyway um before coming on this adventure um as I say, I had um, appointments cancelled due to COVID. Um, but what, eight, nine weeks ago, I went back and had uh, the electrodes put on my legs and my feet um, because I felt like it was getting worse. Um, losing my balance a little bit. I do like a drink of um, red wine or two or white wine. Um, and every now and again, I'd stumble um, because maybe because I'm not concentrating on my, on my feet. Um, and then Nick would say, you drunk again. Um, but it's not that. It was my balance. I'd lose my balance. But um, anyway, went and had this electrode test again. And they said, uh, hang on a minute. No, it's got worse. Um, it's like the back of my calves. Um, and I think it was on the inner foot. Um, or it might be on the outside, I can't remember now. Um, but they said, no, this isn't down to chemo damage or radiotherapy damage, it's something else. So I'm be waiting for more tests to be done, um, you know, under investigation. But, um, you know, you carry on regardless, what else can you do? So I think, um, you know, we've been on our journey and doing all the walks and everything and going up these coastal roads yes i thought to myself hang on a minute are you are you crazy hannah doing all this but i'm 49 at the end of the day and life goes on and i want to be i want to lead a normal life you know yes i have to be careful and i am careful i know my own body i place my foot down to you know and i'll say to nick you know no i'm not doing that or i don't feel like i can do that i've got great good walking boots which have proven a point on this one um this fall um if i had my trainers on i don't know what would have happened i think probably my ankle would have been dangling um <laughs> so yeah um walked up the coastal path to polpero um and i did think to myself oh I've got to be careful here and people were coming down the path saying be careful at the top it's quite slippy because of the rain we've had so i was being careful um and then just obviously placed my foot down and next thing saw my ankle going under um by the way i'm all clear from the cervical cancer i had um didn't have to have a hysterectomy or anything because mine was close on the outer side close to my bow um so i had to have chemotherapy radiotherapy and a week of internal brachiotherapy so I know I'm diverting because that's that's the kind of thing that I do. So um, yeah, keep up with the story. <laughs> Let's go back to my fall. Um, yeah, so my ankle went under me um, uh, and I obviously think my family and f close friends will know that can be, I'm happy, ha known as Happy Hannah and uh, I'm always try to be Happy Hannah. Now and again, it gets to me a little bit. And um, I, I did go a bit hysterical because I couldn't feel what I'd done. You know, my ankle went under me and I did get this sensation of a throbbing feeling. 
and uh, I wondered what I'd done, but I didn't know what I'd done because I can't feel my feet. Anyway, Nick gave me a talking to, which I pre we, we laugh every day, you know. And I always say, and I say to my daughter, and my son, life's too short and you've got to live for today. Oh, you sure have, because you don't know what's around the corner. You just don't know what's around the corner. Look at me now. Just sat here. And it's a beautiful day, and I should be out walking with Nick and Bella. But you have to turn around, take a deep breath, and you have to go, well, I'm still here. <laughs> One of my friends put on a message, at least you didn't fall over the cliff. <laughs> She said that to make me laugh, by the way, not being serious. Um, thank you, Sarah Laws. Uh, yeah, you have to just laugh and you have to get on with it. But at the minute, it's a bit raw still and I can't get over it. I'm finding it quite difficult. Just because I can't get out there and do the walking with Nick. How many steps are on my Fitbit? Nick made me go for a walk at this site. Um, I only went up the path a little bit. 869. Blimey, it's nothing. Do you know what I mean? So it's killing me not being able to do anything. Uh, so, anyway, we were about uh, just over, under under a mile or half a mile or so, over half a mile to get down this coastal path to Polperro. Like Nick said, I think he he actually thought, oh my God, I'm going to have to call Mountain Rescue or something to come and get me, you know. Anyway, Hob managed to hold on to the back of his backpack and uh, hobbled along on my foot. So the peripheral neuropathy is a good thing in a way because I couldn't feel it. Because <laughs> if I had had it done, I don't think I'd have got down that pathway. Anyway, there was a chap at the bottom that went and got me a wheelchair from... Um, the church and then we got a taxi back and i believe one of the motorhome madness karen your hus good husband came and picked us up took us back to the campsite that we were at uh came home iced it elevated it did everything that you know we know what to do me and nick um the bruise it the swelling was you know getting quite bad once i took my boot off um but nothing too bad i had a ankle bracelet on and I was monitoring that, making sure that it wasn't getting any tighter. So, um, left it that night. Um, this site that we, that we were on, they had um, a clubhouse as well. And I wanted to go in there and have a drink. But I didn't get there on the Friday Friday night. Yeah, Friday night because we went to Loo. And then this accident happened on the Saturday. Uh, so Saturday night, couldn't go again to the clubhouse. I did say to Nick come on let's just go for one drink you know hobbling along thinking everything's all right didn't sleep too good that night woke up the next morning saw an ambulance there and just popped over to the, the paramedic just say you know don't want to interrupt you or anything but wondered if you could give me any advice he looked down at it he says it could be your achilles at that point i thought to myself i wonder if i have um torn a ligament or something uh, we were having bets, me and Nick. Nick said, I don't think you've broken it. Uh, it must be a bad sprain. Anyway, decided on the Monday. So the paramedic said, yeah, you're doing the right thing. Keep it elevated, ice it. Let's see how you go on Monday. Got up Monday because Sunday I didn't sleep very well again. Um, I think because obviously I didn't have this protection on it. It was like just loose and couldn't get it in, in a comfortable position. Um, decided to get up and go to, uh, well, ring 111 on the Monday morning. Uh, they were fantastic and they got me into um, the emergency um, x-ray department. Um, not a hospital, but uh, as such. Um, the Cumberland Centre, it was called. Um, they, I was there for seven hours, unfortunately, which was a bit of a pain, not a pain. Uh, yeah, it was a pain because I, I was supposed to be keeping my foot elevated and uh, I hadn't had anything to elevate it. The first laid, um, triage nurse that examined it, she was asking me, can you feel this? What's the pain like? And I was like so upset because I couldn't feel the pain. I couldn't tell her how how how, how painful it was. 
So on a scale of one to ten, how painful is it? Well, no, I had to say ten because um, you know I was I was in a bit of dis discomfort. Uh, so she says so uh, it seems like a sprain, but I'm gonna have to get somebody else to come and have a look at it. Um, anyway. Once she's prod me around and everything, I went back into the waiting room. I could feel my calf getting fatter and fatter, swelling up, um, and began to feel a little bit sick then. Um, some guy got me a table to put my leg on. Um, got so, seen by this lovely doctor, nurse, consultant. Her name was Ruth. She was amazing. I obviously was crying at that point because of the pain um and she had a feel around she says i'm really gonna i'm gonna have to i'm sorry but i'm gonna have to dig a little bit deeper because i can't feel my pain threshold um and she prodded and i was like yeah i think that's pain <laughs> um and then she said yeah i'm sending you for an x-ray um and then i saw on the notes it was something to do with the meniscus lateral ligaments um so i still thought maybe i've torn a ligament um anyway she come out to the waiting room and she said yeah it's a, a good break it's a clean break um pointed to the side of my ankle and then halfway up my leg so told me there and then that i'd have to be uh, go and be put in plaster getting upset again because i've never broken anything in my life and also more to the point we were going to mexico for our um honeymoon because we got married during covid <laughs> so we were going to aruba that got put off because of covid and then it was more money and got put off again because we didn't want to go over that way with masks on and everything so we left it and we said let's we, well we booked mexico and the woman in the estate uh, travel agent said you won't get a better price you know so we transferred it to mexico for Nick's 40th birthday and our honeymoon and also celebrating uh, six years of being cancer free. So we were going to have an amazing holiday. I do everything. Loads of trips and and now this has happened. So I'm dealing with poor Nick, you know, and not being able to go on this amazing holiday. Um, the fact that I'm just sat here doing nothing. Um, and it could go on for like 12 weeks. So, uh, booked in tomorrow in Derryford Hospital. Uh, which I'm hoping and praying that I can have a boot maybe. So I won't, won't be able to fly anyway because um, of the, you know, a, a long distance flight for deep vein thrombosis. So the holiday is out of the question anyway. Uh, so, and it's too short notice to push it back, you know, to a different time. Because that would have been ideal to say, okay, let's go in March or something like that. Um, or being well if I was better something to look forward to but we can't do that now because um it's too short notice so hopefully it's like get claiming back on the travel insurance get the money back but you won't be able to get a another good holiday for such a good price what we paid um anyway on tomorrow hopefully um just gonna have plaster like my daughter said what color will you have <laughs> um um and, and jan she said you can have a customized plaster so don't know i, I initially thought of a luminous pink but oh you're gonna put it up with that for uh shining at you for 12 weeks if it's 12 weeks four weeks whatever i'm just hoping and praying that um they don't turn around and say i've got to have a pin or a plate or something i would have thought they would have prepared me for that <laughs> but who knows that'll be part two i'll do another video um yeah oh so yeah i'm grateful to be sat here in this and uh really you've got to think to yourself maybe i'm not in that much pain because i can't feel my feet but 
yeah god last night was painful um managing to get around on the crutches in and out of the motorhome when i need to go toilet by the way and i do talk openly but when i need to go toilet i need to go so that was wasn't very good last night i needed to go and it was like <gasps> normally i'd just run the toilet but get this crutch out and <laughs> get the other crutch out and oh god yeah so last night i perhaps wanted was gonna say to the hospital tomorrow keep me in or fit me a catheter or something <laughs> i don't know yeah so anyway the sun's shining today so yeah you you know i said to my mum and dad um where are we lose track of my time but when i've got back from the hospital you know having this plaster on i'll be all right tomorrow Ugh. and i wasn't all right and I'm still not really all right now. I'm trying to be all right, because you've got to be all right. What else can you do? But I don't want to be all right, really. <laughs> Feeling sorry for myself. This is just the worst thing that could have ever happened. <laughs> Cancer, I've done it. You know, I've got over that. Now I've got to do this. Like my legs mean everything to me. <laughs> And people that know me, though, I'm sat here and thinking, well, I did ligaments on my knee um, when I was doing Slimming World. And I was crying, thinking, oh, I'm, you know, I'm so active, I'm going to pile all the weight on. I think I lost about three and a half pound that week. So hopefully I'll lose a bit of weight because I've put it on because, it, well, I've lost, hopefully I've lost a bit because of all the walking I've been doing, but toning up. But now I like can't do anything, so that's on my mind as well. And Nick's brilliant. Oh dear, I picked a good one there. He's probably not thinking about the same as me saying that. But um, yeah, he's like looked after me and he's waiting on me hand and foot. But then he just said, "Come on." young lady let's get you out stretch your legs <laughs> i was like what it's hard work on these crutches and this plaster is so heavy oh my god that's the worst thing about it i think it's just so heavy anyway um you'll laugh i've got all my cross stitch things to do look at this one that i might have a crack at it might be done for next year or it might be done it might be done for this christmas actually i might do it now <laughs> anyway yeah i just wanted to come on and just uh, give you an update from me hannah bailey i'm not now i'm a story but i'll always be hannah bailey crazy one um yeah okay everyone and now uh, do you know what i nearly forgot then um i need to say thank you so so very very much for all my um messages um wishing me well so sending lots of love and um hope this video helps some people if you want to get in touch with about any cervical cancer problems or breakages <laughs> then drop me a line and i've got lots of time to reply to messages so it's it keeps you going doesn't it chatting to people so bye for now everyone <laughs>